I laugh every time I see these signs because they are so true. I have so many teacher friends that just don't talk before they've had their first cup. That's because as teachers, we know what we need to prepare to be at our best. In today's Coffee Chat, we join with iReady specialists to discuss resources and best practices in preparing our students to perform their best on the upcoming iReady Mid-Year Diagnostic. So grab a cup and a notebook and let's get to learning. Hello darlings, it's Melissa, your learning technologies trainer. Welcome to Coffee Chat, where we come and talk about the best practices in teaching mathematics here in Cincinnati Public Schools. Here today, I am here with a friend, Lindsay Aguilar, our iReady specialist. Lindsay, welcome to Coffee Chat. Hi, Melissa. I'm really excited to be here. So, Lindsay, I cannot believe it is time for our mid-year winter diagnostic. It is upon us. And as we're preparing for that winter diagnostic, let's take a moment and reflect on how things went in our fall diagnostic. Yeah, so things went really well on our fall diagnostic. We had over 96% of our students that we successfully completed in the first diagnostic. And we know that that is an outstanding number, especially given all of the challenges we always have at the back to school season and getting used to being with our kids in their classroom and especially those young ones, getting them to know how to use the computer correctly. So you guys have done a phenomenal job and we see that with our diagnostic results. Um, one thing that we kind of want to think about that could have gone better in our fall diagnostic that we'd like to see improved this winter would be our rush flags. So as a district, there were a lot of both yellow and red rush flags, which unfortunately indicates that we may not have gotten the best and most reliable data for those students. So thinking about how we can motivate students um, and get them to do their best on this second diagnostic so that we can get that most accurate and reliable data is an area for improvement for us in the second one. I actually really appreciate that you mentioned that, Lindsay, because I know personally I was fielding all kinds of questions and emails and chats from teachers about resetting the diagnostic because students were rushing. And unfortunately, with our testing department and to make sure that our data is reliable and valid, we don't reset student tests for rushing. So it's really important that we put practices in place that help students to take breaks when they need, that help students to de-escalate and slow themselves down when they need so that we have the most reliable data that we possibly can. Yes, Melissa, that's so great. And that is wonderful information for teachers to have when they're thinking about giving this second diagnostic because the best way that we can ensure that we get good data is to motivate students to do their best. They're the ones who take the test so they have to be engaged and they have to see the value and the purpose of the diagnostic. So let's get into this, Lindsay. What exactly do we need to know about this second diagnostic? Yeah, so we need to know that it's opening soon. So now is the time to start preparing, to start putting a plan in place for when you're going to give it, how you're going to give it, collecting materials, making sure that all of those things are ready so that when you give the diagnostic to students, they're gonna have the best environment and the best atmosphere to do their best work. We also want to point out that after the second diagnostic, you're going to receive these really cool growth reports that you're gonna be able to use to see how your students have grown so far in the year and it's really awesome because not only do you get to see and celebrate student growth, but you also get to kind of pinpoint where you could improve your own teaching practice. So looking at certain groups of students or certain areas in mathematical domains that maybe students didn't grow as much as you would have liked for them to becomes an area of improvement for our professional practice. Before we dig into data, because you know that numbers is my jam, 
I do want to ask you about how to hide the diagnostic. So in the in the fall, there were teachers that reached out to us because their students started early and they weren't really able to really create that testing environment for those few students that you just talked about. So is there a way to hide that diagnostic until the teacher's ready? Yes, Melissa, so this is great news, especially given the fact that we have a very long um, window for our second diagnostic, and you may not want to give the diagnostic the day that it opens. So since there's nothing you as the teacher have to do to make the diagnostic appear, when the window opens, it shows up. And it kind of takes over the iReady platform, meaning that students can't access anything else until they do the diagnostic. So hiding it is really important if you want them to continue using their MyPath lessons or the teacher assigned lessons, comprehension checks. We can hide that diagnostic so that students can continue using the other features of iReady until you're ready for them to take the diagnostic. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over and show you how to hide your diagnostic. So from your iReady dashboard, once you've logged into your iReady account, you're gonna go to the rosters tab in the upper left-hand corner of your toolbar. So once you click on the rosters tab, you'll need to select the class that you want to hide the diagnostic for. So if you have multiple classes, you'll need to hide the diagnostic for each of those classes that you have. So once you select the class that you want to hide the diagnostic for, you'll see that the class information pops up in a little box. And right underneath the box in these tiny little letters, it says assessments shown. And assessments is clickable. So if you select assessments, it'll pop up a, a box that will tell you to toggle over to hide the assessments. So all you have to do is toggle it over, click save, and the diagnostic is now hidden from that class of students. So now they can continue to work on their MyPath lessons or their interactive practices or all of the other wonderful features that the iReady platform offers. So Lindsay, looking back a little bit to something that you said earlier that really stuck in my mind was that the best way to get good data is to motivate the students. And I think that that's so important because we should never lose sight of the fact that the students, the tiny human beings in the seats is why we are doing this diagnostic. So as teachers, we need to spend very little of our time collecting the data and a lot of our time looking at what the data tells us about our students. And if the students are not motivated to do their very best on the diagnostic, then it makes it very difficult for us to be able to respond to them and give them what they really need. So what do you think or what resources does I already have to motivate students to do their best on the diagnostic so that we get good data to support students and families? Yes, Melissa, that's a fantastic question. Um, so on iReady Central, we actually have a lot of resources that are going to help you talk to your students about the diagnostic. And we find that that's one of the best ways to motivate students. So I'm going to navigate to iReadyCentral.com and show you some of those resources. Here on iReadyCentral.com, we have a ton of resources for pretty much anything you need for iReady, the digital side. And on the left-hand column, you'll see a tab that says Getting Good Data. This is the same tab that you use for the first diagnostic. So a lot of the same resources that we used to get good data the first time, we can reuse with our second diagnostic. So I would encourage you just to spend some time looking through some of the resources on this page. We have everything from um, ways to track completion, cheat sheets for the different reports that you get. But one resource that I think is really important for everyone to check out will be down here under the prepare and motivate students section. So, um, we did have a preparing students for the diagnostic presentation, 
And right underneath it, there's preparing students for a subsequent diagnostic. So this PowerPoint, once you download it, is divided by grade level so that you can show the slides that are developmentally appropriate for your students. And it will help walk the students through the experience they're going to have on the diagnostic, why they're taking the diagnostic, how it helps them become better learners, how it gives them data, and then also why it's important for their MyPath. So using this as a stepping point for having discussions with your students about why they should do their best on the diagnostic is one of the most powerful tools that we have to help students be motivated to do their best. There are also some other resources here that you might want to check out, including some introductory videos that will show the students what the diagnostic looks like. So if you want to remind them of some of the features that they'll see, including those brain breaks, then there's a lot of resources here. So Lindsay, I think I actually remember these videos that you're talking about. And if I'm not mistaken, the student and the teacher are both talking about the diagnostic. Am I right? Yes. So these introductory videos are part of the same video that students will see when they actually begin the diagnostic. It will walk them through some of the important components of the diagnostic and the teacher and student viewpoint kind of bounce back and forth. It will also go over how to use some of the tools that are embedded into the diagnostic, like the audio supports um, and the different math tools like the calculators and the number lines and those types of things. So it's really good to have students see this video ahead of time so that you can talk through some of those features with students and prepare them to do their best. Now, I love that. In addition to allowing the students to see the features, I love that both the student and the teacher are partnering together about the best practices on that diagnostic. Because that's so, so important in our classrooms for students to be able to see and understand that our core purpose there is their growth. But their core purpose in the classroom is also their growth. And so we have to partner together and talk about how the student is progressing and really elevate and amplify that student voice so that they are an active part of the conversation and how they are showing their growth, which is what this diagnostic is about. It's not just about testing for testing's sake. It's about really showing how well am I growing in my grade level standards, which I really, really love about taking the diagnostic multiple times. Now, speaking of a collaborative conversation between teachers and students. After we take the diagnostic, does I already have any resources to help teachers to have kind of like data talks or talks about growth and next steps with students? Yes. So I ready um, really believes in student data chats. That's what they call them. Um, and so after students have taken the diagnostic, we do have a lot of resources that will help teachers prepare for having those conversations. But we also believe that in order to motivate students, it's helpful to have some of these conversations before the diagnostic as well. These are more like goal setting conversations. So talking through with the student about how they did on the first diagnostic, what their goals can be going into this diagnostic, and just kind of reflecting on what they want to grow in and, and what they think they can do. Show us any of the available resources through iReady Classroom Central. And for our listeners that are listening to us audio only, I guess they'll have to take some notes so that way they can play around on their own time. So back on iReadyCentral.com, which remember is our hub of all things iReady, on the left-hand column, this time we're going to go down to engaging students and families. So there are also some resources for engaging families about the second diagnostic that you might want to dive into, but we're going to go to the Engage Students page where they have all of the resources we need to set goals with students and then also to have those data chats after their second diagnostic. 
So just scrolling through the page, you'll see that there are a lot of resources that are really helpful, including how to guide goal setting. And when we're goal setting, we really want to guide students in thinking about their typical and their stretch growth. So remember that iReady has two types of growth. One is just their typical growth, what they should do by the end of the year. And then the stretch growth is the growth we really want them to hit in order to hit proficiency. So taking those two um, goals into mind when you're goal setting with students is really helpful to help direct them in a positive way. We also have trackers that students can use. So we have class trackers, we have student trackers, pledge sheets and reflections that you can utilize with students as appropriate by their grade level to help them think about their own data, set their own goals, and then after the diagnostic, reflect on how they did as well. So definitely check out some of these resources. There are videos to help you. There are um, question guides and just lots and lots of examples of what other teachers have done to help motivate their students through these data chats, um, including setting class goals. So maybe you don't have the time to sit down with each of your students because you have too many classes and you just can't make the time. Maybe giving the students the ability to do some self-reflection and goal setting, but then also setting class goals so that you're in incorporating teamwork and collaboration and having students work together towards a common goal of increasing their performance and becoming mathematicians. I absolutely love all of these resources. So many ways for teachers to really engage students in looking at their growth, looking at their data. And one thing that I love that you said is if time is an issue, then having the students self-reflect would also be very, very powerful. And I just happen to know some learning technologies that may help out with that. So feel free to take these charts because they're PDFs post them on Pear Deck, have students complete them on Kami. You can even use videos like Flipgrid or WeVideo or Screencastify to have students maybe on video talk about their reflection of their learning. There are so many options. I'm really excited about bringing some tech into that, Lindsay. Thank you so much for all of your great suggestions. Anything, any final helpful hints or tidbits that we need to know or keep in mind as we're preparing for the next diagnostic? Uh, Melissa, we have covered a lot of resources and a lot of topics in our coffee chat today. So I just want to take a moment to just brag on the teachers at CPS and just what a phenomenal job that they're doing. And let's just remember as we move into the second diagnostic, that the reason we're collecting data is to make ourselves more effective for all of our students. And so thinking about how we can motivate and prepare students to be successful on the diagnostic, the more things we can do to help the students, the better off everyone's going to be. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for shouting out our rock star teachers at Cincinnati Public Schools. I agree, we have some of the best in the business they work hard for their students, and I'm really excited that we've gotten a chance to give them some resources and some tips on how to prepare to give their next diagnostic. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by and chatting with us. Until we learn again together, always keep growing.